In this video, we're exploring an abandoned power plant and the ruins of a cotton mill dating back to the mid-1850s. I actually found this place slightly by accident. I was just um, killing time before a photo shoot, and I didn't realize how extensive the ruins were here, so I decided to take a closer look. This part right here was pretty precarious. There was, um, there was a pretty steep drop-off, about 20 or 30 feet down, and that's just um, nasty swamp water down there. It was really rough. I was kind of debating going across that, but I was pretty sure there was an easier way around. This is probably one of the more terrifying things I've seen. The video really doesn't do it any justice, but if you can see, that's about a 60 foot drop straight down. And this is just wide open right here. All right, I'm standing on the roof of this dilapidated abandoned building. It's probably not the brightest thing I've ever done, but I have a good foothold here, so I don't think I'll fall. So this looks like it was some kind of uh, water tank or something the bottom of the floor is sloped downwards and they do have a ladder to get out if you fall in but i don't think i would want to fall in i probably wouldn't survive if i fell in yeah this was right near a busy road and it was a little tricky to not be seen where i was but i don't really think anybody cared That's all thorns right there. That was not fun getting through that. And I have to be really careful everywhere I step. These um, bricks keep shifting. And I'm not entirely sure about the structural integrity of this place. That's half the fun of what I do. This is amazing. <laughs> This place was in relatively good condition up until 1999 when a couple of locals torched the whole place. Part of the reason that urban explorers don't really share their locations is because people do things like this. They vandalize buildings, they steal things, and they torch them. I've lost count of how many incredible places have been just completely destroyed because someone went in and set the place on fire just for fun. That's why we don't share locations usually. We try to keep these places safe and preserved the best we can. It's kind of funny when I go through all these crazy ways to get into places like jumping over barbed wire fences or thorns and then I'll get inside and I'll find just a door or a window that's wide open and I could have just strolled right in. <laughs> I guess that's the way I'm going to go out though. Okay, so I'm standing inside of what I thought was a water um, tank at first, but now, since I'm standing in a doorway, obviously it couldn't hold water. And I'm seeing um, this right here, which meant they loaded something in. So I'm thinking, this must have been a coal chute and a coal storage area for the power plant. And that would make a lot more sense as to why there's a couple doors down here. And this is awesome. This structure right here is pretty interesting because this is something that was retrofitted 
Uh, I'm not sure the exact time period. I know that cement was more widely used around the turn of the century, um, 1900s and going forward. I see a lot of that style of architecture starting in 1907, 1908. As you can tell from the bricks and some of the other parts of the structure, this building was built about, I'm going to guess the uh, late 1800s, probably 1870s, 1890s maybe. Yeah, sure, what the hell, let's risk our life to go upstairs. <laughs> okay. I couldn't film that because that was a little precarious. It's so basically I just put my feet on either side because I don't trust those steps. But I got up safely. This is what's up here. This is one of the more fascinating features of this power plant. Big stone arches like this, I don't really see in buildings that were built um, around the 1900s. I see it closer to 1850s, 1870s. So this is really interesting. There's a couple of time periods in this building represented through the architecture. Looks like this is the window control for these windows up here. So at the beginning of the exploration, I saw a house cat just sitting on the other side of the ruins. And so that told me that there had to be some kind of path or something to get over there. So I was just kind of exploring this side on a hunch. I wasn't exactly prepared for the amount of pricker bushes and mosquitoes I was going to encounter. And I'm pretty sure they took about a gallon of my blood with them. But getting up close to those gigantic pipes was really awesome. The size of these pipes is just mind-blowing. Rough estimate, it looks like it's about 15 feet high. Let's see if we can get over to the other side. Wow. Where I'm standing right now is where the river fed into the power canal, so I don't know if you can see it on the walls there, but you can see the old water line. So right now, where I'm standing, I would be under about six feet of water. Thanks for exploring with us. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to catch all of our upcoming videos. See you next time.